Well, hello, and welcome to Emerald's Table. You know there's a chill in the air? And as the weather changes, so does your food cravings. Let's face it. We want warm, comforting classics. Today, they're back in style. First up, mm, a hearty chicken pot pie. We're going to top it with a puff pastry crust, plus a satisfying spicy meatloaf topped with a sweet and tangy glaze. You'll want to make it for your family tonight. So come join me at my table. You know, today it's all about comforting classics, and I couldn't think of anyone more comforting to join me at my table than a group of some great nurses. Please say hello to Ashley, Bethany, Anne, Tan Tan, and Bola. So nice to have you guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I know it's, uh, you know, it's tough to get out of the hospital, but I'm glad you guys are here. So what are some of your comforting food that you guys like to eat? How about you? I like chicken and rice. Chicken and rice? Chicken I and love rice. that. My nanny's uh, chicken pot pie. Ah, that's great, because that's exactly what we're going to be making today Fantastic. as one of our dishes. <laughs> nanny's a great cook. I love her macaroni and cheese. I love it. <laughs> I have to take it to my own culture and say pho. That's my comfort food. You know, food. it's one of my favorites, mm -hmm. pho, which is probably the dish of Vietnam. Yes. I absolutely love it. I have a place in New Orleans that I visit all the time for pho. <laughs> Most of the chicken, but I like the beef sometimes with uh, all the uh, oxtails and yeah, all that stuff that yeah. they do. How about you? Sounds good. I will have to say macaroni and cheese and fried chicken. I love it. <laughs> I'm with you on that, too. I'm with you on that. Today, we're going to do uh, an incredible, uh, a shorter version of pot pie. Keep in mind this. If you, do you guys cook? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So when you make pot pie, and if you make pot pie at home, whether you're using a pie crust or using puff pastry or whatever, or maybe a biscuit recipe, when you make it, it's not like the simplest thing to do. So make, make two of them. They freeze really, really well. What we're going to do is I have just sort of, I'm using chicken thighs. You can buy them boneless and skinless, okay? Why add all the calories so we take the skin away? And basically what we're going to do, that's what they look like. So basically what we're going to do, and you're going to see that I have a separate board with the separate knife, because we don't want to contaminate. Yeah, you guys know what that means. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> so we don't want to contaminate, so we'll basically have our own boards. But we want to basically put them in dice pieces, as I'm doing here like that. So we have the chicken meat, separate board. Well, what we're going to do is with some oil, first of all, clean hand, We're going to start adding the chicken inside of our pot, and we're going to start browning that. Now what I'll do is take the board, the knife, and the platter, and we'll lose it. We'll lose that over here. Now, what we're going to do is actually season the chicken now. So now what we're going to do is add fresh ground pepper. We're going to make it a little spicier. So we're going to add a little cayenne pepper as well. Yum. Just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Just give it a little, give it a little pop. I have that one. <laughs> yeah. And then we're going to also add, of course, some salt. That was the sea salt that I'm using. So what we want to do, guys, is we want to stop browning the chicken. When it browns, which is going to take about 8 to 10 minutes or so, to totally for it to be brown, mm -hmm. we're going to take it out. Okay. When we take it out, we're letting the chicken sort of rest. Now we're going to add the vegetables. And what that is, we've got celery. We have some garlic. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a garlic freak, yeah. so I, and I think it's great for you. Carrots. Good for your heart. These are just regular button mushrooms, mm -hmm. okay, that you want a quarter. But look at these. They're kind of dirty. Yeah. So you can wash them in the sink. You can use a vegetable brush to take the dirt out of them. See how what I'm doing right there? Mm -hmm. Or if you don't have a vegetable brush, you can always use a damp towel. Look at that. 
and clean them up just like that. What do you think about those fruit and vegetable washes that they sell? Well, around? yeah, I, I don't, I, I, I really haven't used them a lot mm -hmm. myself, but I, I, I'm, I'm sure they work. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're going to do, the potatoes and the thyme, we're going to add last. All right, so now we're going to remove the brown chicken out of the pot. And once we remove the chicken out now that's browned, now we're going to add the vegetables to our pot, ladies. Here, as you can see, I now have the vegetables that have been cooking for about 10 to 12 minutes. They're pretty caramelized right now, and they smell pretty good, too. They smell excellent. So now what I want to do is I want to take some flour, okay? And I want to add some flour to this. And basically now the flour with the oils, the natural juices from the chicken, we're actually, what we're doing is we're making a roux. Oh. And this is actually what the thickening agent is. Now, there are other thickening agents. There are arrowroot, there's cornstarch, mm -hmm. but a roux is generally the most used for a thickening agent, whether it's chicken and dumplings, or whether it's pot pie, or whether it's making a clam chowder, okay? Now, there's a secret to this. Once the roux cooks, we're now gonna add the stock to it. How much do you add is the question. So I'm using some chicken broth, and you're gonna see in a minute, by now stirring in the roux and our vegetables to the broth, when it comes to a boil, that's when you know how thick it is. It will not be at its full thickening capacity until it comes to a boil no matter what thickening agent it is. We're gonna let it simmer, gonna brown some more chicken. We're gonna add the chicken to that. When we come back, we're gonna show you an unbelievable pot pie. We'll be right back, stay with us. I got the nurses, stay with us. <laughs> hey, we're back at Emerald's Table and today we're whipping up my favorites. Comfort food. Yeah. Uh, we all have them, guys, you know? Now, joining me at the table, some great guests, definitely our nurses here, and we are about ready to get comfortable with our chicken pot pie. Guys, you see how thick it is now? If it got really too thick, you could add a little bit more stock. Mm -hmm. I also like to add a little bit of cream, just a little bit, just to make it a little creamier. Is that heavy cream or? Yeah, you could whipping cream, heavy cream. Okay. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to add the chicken in. Oh so that, that goes bye-bye now. Then on top of that, we're going to add our thyme and potatoes. And why does the potatoes and thyme go last? Well, because we don't want them to get all mushy. Mm. And if you tie your thyme like that, it'll stay together as opposed to going all over the place. That's why I have it bundled. That's a good idea. And then what we're going to do is we're also going to add peas. Now, we want to cover and simmer this for about 25 to 30 minutes. But peas, you can wait till the end. If I'm using fresh peas, these are fresh, they need to cook. Mm -hmm. So you would, you know, you would shuck these just like such, and then they split open, you see? And then there's the little peas right inside there. You see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So if we're using fresh peas, we'd cook them in now. Oh, you could also use frozen peas as well. So we're going to cover this now. Like I said, we're going to simmer it. And basically, it's going to cook for about 25, 30 minutes. You know, when you're making this dish, like I said earlier, you could make extra because you can always freeze them. They'll last in the freezer for a month or two. So what we're going to now do is let that mixture cool a little bit so you're able to work with it. Okay, so now I bring it over here. Now, let's talk about puff pastry, which we're gonna to use today. We could use pie crust, would be savory. Mm -hmm. You could use a biscuit recipe and do biscuits on that. So it's really where you wanna go, okay? Puff pastry, you can buy frozen in the grocery store in the frozen section. When you're gonna work with it, you gotta let it thaw out. Okay? 
And basically, it is a very delicate, multi-layered, flaky pastry. What happens is that it's made by placing chilled fat, which is usually butter, mm -hmm. okay, between the layers. So they roll it. Then they spot it with butter. Then they fold the dough over. Then they roll it again. Wow. They fold it, and they roll it over. So what we're going to do is use a ramekin today. And basically, we're going to cut a little circle that's a little bigger than our ramekin. You have one in front of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, you need something to let that sort of stick, if you will. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an organic egg, and we're going to just take the white part out of it, and using the egg yolk part of it with a little bit of cream, we're going to have a little whisking potty now. <laughs> okay? So that's an egg wash, which is called an egg wash, except we're using cream so that we can use that to brush our crust. In front of you, you have a crust, you have a brush. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the <laughs> pot pie mixture and fill our ramekin up. Fill it to the top, or? Uh, not quite, because it's going to expand a little bit, believe it or not. Okay, so we're going to take, take our pie mixture. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Can you put something on the bottom, too? Like, a, a, on the bottom? Or? Well, you could. You could cover the whole thing up. Uh, Tan Tan, why don't you do your ramekin mm -hmm. and help bowl her out? Yes. While I explain, okay, is that close enough to you? I have short arms. Thank you. How's that? Perfect. Okay, so now what we're going to do is you're going to take your brush. You're going to dip it inside of that egg wash. And then you're going to brush your whole crust. You got enough? Yeah. I okay, think I do. you're going to do that. You're going to do that. You have enough? Yeah. You have enough? I think so. Yep. You have enough? I think I'm good. All right, ladies, it's all up to you now with the little egg wash. Now what you're gonna do is this. You're gonna take your puff pastry and you're gonna place it right over it. And then you're gonna just sort of press, press it right to the sides, okay? <laughs> press it right to the sides. Meanwhile, we're gonna preheat our oven to 400 degrees. And puff pastry is gonna take about 20, 22 minutes to cook. Now, your extra puff pastry sheets that you have, don't waste them. Cut them in strips, butter them, sprinkle Parmesan cheese, and now you have some Parmesan cheese twists that you could have as a little snack. We're going to bake them, and when we return, it's all about my spicy meatloaf. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Good job. Thanks. Oh, all right. Now, so then press it on the sides. All right, now I'm going to collect them. You're going to surrender. Top rack, 400 degrees, 20 minutes, using puff pastry. I'm so excited. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, welcome back. Homestyle cooking is what Comforting Classics is all about. And I'm going to share my favorite spicy meatloaf recipe with you right now. You ready, ladies? Yes. Getting right. a little hungry? Yes. All right, I've rendered some bacon here. And you want to do the bacon first before you add the vegetables. Because if you don't, the water from the vegetables is not going to crisp up the bacon. So two... The bacon, we're going to add parsley, bell pepper, and green onions, mm. celery, jalapeno, which is going to make it nice and spicy, thyme, and garlic. So onions, bell pepper, parsley to the bacon. Now garlic, jalapeno, thyme, celery, and some green onions. You with me? Yeah. All right. Just checking, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to season them now so we have... This is nice and seasoned. We're going to add now some salt as well as some cayenne pepper, yeah. which is going to even make it spicy with the jalapeno. Now, in this bowl here, I've got ground chuck, 85-15, so 85% lean. You can get it leaner if you want, 90-10. You've got to have a little bit of fat and pork sausage. So a pound and a half, three quarters of a pound of the pork sausage. You could use sweet Italian sausage. You could make it hot Italian sausage. That's out of the casing? And that's out of the casing. Yes. So just buy it, take it right out of the casing. Now, two eggs, a little bit of whipping cream, okay? 
How much? Ladies, basically it's one egg per pound. Okay, okay. So I got two eggs. I'm whisking them with the, with the cream. That's going to go right inside here as well. Now, breadcrumbs, that's going to go in here. But basically, I wait for the breadcrumbs until I get the mixture. So when the vegetables get nice and soft, about another minute or so, they're getting very fragrant, as you can see. Yeah, now, we want to make a topping for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some chili sauce. So basically, it's a spicy ketchup, if you will, right? We're going to take it. We're going to sweeten it with some brown sugar. Mm -hmm. And we're going to add a little Worcestershire sauce to it, which is going to make it really nice and yummy. So we're going to mix this together. Oh, yeah. And that's really what that's going to be now is our topping. So what we're going to do is take now our vegetables. Oh, yeah. And then if you want, you can add, you know, you could do gloves. You can do whatever. I just use a wooden spoon like this, okay? Folding it in. Now I look and see how moist it is. And that's when I say, okay, I'm going to use breadcrumbs now. Mm, smells so good. <laughs> which the breadcrumbs and the egg is what's going to bind it. We're going to preheat our oven to 375. Okay? Now, when all the ingredients are together, guys, mm -hmm. we're going to add that to the pan, the roasting pan. Then we're going to shape our meatloaf. Do you have to have a lot of room like that, or? Yeah, I just okay. had a little room. We could beef it up a little bit. Make sure it's com compressed. And then we're going to top it with our chili glaze. And then we're going to put it in the oven. Like I said, 375. And we're going to put it in there. When we come back, you're not going to believe the comfort food that we're going to have. Mm. And it's time to eat now, ladies, OK? Yeah. All right, finally. <laughs> We'll be right back. Stay with us. So look, there you have it right there. Uh, Welcome back, folks. Our pot pies are finished. Our meatloaf is in the oven. About 45 minutes for that meatloaf. Go ahead. Let's go. Let's okay, dig in, ladies. Okay. okay. I mean, I don't Tell know about you. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about you, but I, I can't wait anymore. I'm starving. Mm. <laughs> Look at that steam. Mm. Mm. Very Amazing. Mm. So good. I love the flavor. Now, what I'm going to do, ladies, is come to the oven. Oh, look at that baby steaming. That, my friends is amazing. Mm. Okay. Mm. Look at this. Oh my God. Does that not look uh, pretty amazing? Awesome. So good. I, I volunteer to taste Tan. You do? <laughs> Tan Tan Second says fat. she's first to taste. <laughs> now, how so, do you know when it's done in the middle? If you're ever unsure, which a lot of people are, mm -hmm. use a meat thermometer. You should get a reed meat thermometer. Now, what I'm going to do it's just, oh, guys, wait a minute. <laughs> Tam Tam, I don't know yeah. if you could really handle this right now. Oh, she can handle it. I handle it. All right, why don't you be the first taster mm -hmm. to oh, see if we, should, so if we well, should go on. Well, it's, falling, it's, it's falling apart. <laughs> see, I could have just given you that little piece like that, but I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. Look how, fall, how it's falling apart, though, guys. Thank you. Mm. I can't help that it's falling apart. Oh my God. You know what it is? Mm. Mm. We didn't, A, we didn't use a lot of breadcrumb, which I'm glad we're not, because I want to taste good. the meat. Here you go. Awesome. I ripped Thank you off. <laughs> the sauce is excellent. It's incredible. How is it, guys? Very Very good. Good. Thank you for joining me today. And thank you for joining me at my table. <laughs> Remember, folks, food is meant to be shared, uh -huh. especially with friends like you. See you next time. Mm -hmm. All right, the meatloaf is like oh, to God, die for, right? <laughs> yes. Mm. Uh, the meatloaf is awesome. It's really flavorful. It's Why don't you guys stay for dinner? Uh, yes. Why not? <laughs> we'll make some new food. Okay, <laughs> sure. Guys, that meatloaf? 
mean a pot pie is smoked good. Is that meatloaf? I don't know which one's better.